Hello everyone. So now we are going to talk about Gauss law applications. So there are like three to four derivations we have to do. So we will do one by one. Okay. The first application electric field due to an infinitely long charged wire. So I simply call it as line of charge. So there is a line of charge. What is the line of charge? There is a line and the charge is given to the line and let's say Q charge is given. So how much will be the length? Length is let's say L. So one new term that you got to be very clear about lambda, which is called a linear charge density. We can call it as Q by L. So in first year in our 11th class, we studied linear mass density, right? So aerial mass density, volume mass density, the same way here it is linear charge density Q by L. Okay. So it's a uniformly charged straight wire. So now we are going to find out what is the electric field uh, due to this one. So basically you can uh, choose a Gaussian surface here. So how do you choose a Gaussian surface? So I would be giving the diagram. You can see that. So here the Gauss actually already decided that is to use cylinder as the Gaussian surface. So we can also follow the cylinder thing. So you can see that there is a cylinder. The cylinder is covering the entire infinitely long wire actually. So some of you might be thinking that how it is actually this cylinder is covering all of them. So you just understand if the line is actually infinitely long, then cylinder is also infinitely long. So the length of the cylinder would be same as the length of the wire. So this is the idea that you have to use here. Now. Uh, we have, we have, this is the Gaussian surface. We are going to apply Gauss law here. And what is the technique to use Gauss law? I'll tell you the technique. This is what I'm going to use in the upcoming applications also. So the technique is very simple. Number one, what is the definition of electric flux? So the definition of electric flux, you can, you can understand that integral, like you know that e, e dot dA. So E dot dA is equal to phi electric flux. Okay, this is the general representation of electric flux or you can call it as definition of electric flux. So this is okay. Let it be there. We need to do that. Okay, we need to do this part, particular part. And also you know that according to Gauss, what is electric flux? Electric flux is equal to the total charge enclosed, Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So these two equations, actually, you can equate, then get the value. So the only thing that you have to do here, find out this part, integral E dot dA, and then equate with the Q by epsilon naught, find out E. This is the, this is the algorithm to find out what electric field. All right. So now we are going to find out this one, integral E dot dA, but there is a small thing. How many areas are here? You can see that. Here area number one, sorry, area number one is here A1 and area number two is this one A2 and area number three that is this uh, area number A3 is also here. That is the, the surface area. So for example, if you consider this as a cylinder, this is the top area, this is the bottom area and this is the surface area. Okay. So that is what is... Uh, the surface total area. So one thing you can understand that here, let's uh, find out E dot dA for each surface. So I'm going to find out E dot dA for A1. So integral E dot dA for A1. How much will be that? You can see that integral E dot dA for A1 will be, and first we have to find out the dot product in order to get that electric field will be in this direction, which is already given there. What about the area? I already told you, if this is the area, area will be always perpendicular to it. So area is in this direction. So what is the angle between them? 90 degree. So no doubt, no doubt this is equal to zero. What is the reason? Since theta is equal to 90 degree, area between electric field and area is uh, 90 degree and cos 90 is equal to Cos 90 degrees is equal to 0. So that is why integral E dot dA for A1 is equal to 0. Similarly, what about integral E dot dA for A2? 
So what about integral e dot dA for A2? So that is also I want to find out. So you can see that this area again, electric field, this direction, that as usual, and area, this direction. So what will be the angle between them? Again, 90 degree. So it is very clear that this is also zero. Again, the same reason theta is equal to 90 degree and cos 90 is equal to zero. So that part has been sorted. Now I have to only consider the third area, which is that the surface area of the cylinder. And you can see that integral E dot dA for A3, that would be equal to, that is equal to, how much is that? How much is that? So that is, you can see here electric field is this direction. Electric field is this direction. Area is also same direction. So I can say, so E into integral dA will be coming. So I'll be writing here since theta is equal to 0 degree and cos 0 is equal to 1. So that is why it will be E into integral dA. And how much is the total area there? How much is the total area? You can, you can understand that this total area is pi r square into h, right? No, that is the volume. So every student, uh, uh, like they do the same mistake every time. Pi r square into h they do. No, that's the volume of the cylinder. What is the area of the cylinder? So this is a non-uniform cylinder. Don't consider. Consider it as a uniform. So it is 2 pi r into h. That is the area. 2 pi r into h. That is what is the area. So I can write this will be equal to e into 2 pi r into what is the height here? Height I have given. It is the length of the wire that is L. So this is what is the net electric flux. Since the other electric fluxes are equal to zero, this is the net electric flux here. Now I can understand that if this is the net electric flux, you can equate with Q by epsilon naught. So according to Gauss law, phi E is equal to Q enclosed. So how much is the total Q enclosed? That is Q divided by epsilon zero. That is equal to E into 2 pi r L. So now you can see what is the E equation. So I can write E is equal to, you can see that E is equal to Q divided by epsilon 0 2 pi r L. Or what is Q by L? That is lambda. So I can substitute that over there. So I can write E is equal to, so you can see that Q by this one, you can write to Q by L, you can write. Q by L, you can write as lambda. So it will be lambda divided by 2 pi r into epsilon naught. So this is what is the equation and into n cap I am going to put, which is the direction basically. So this is the equation for electric field due to a linear charge or linear uh, charge or a line of charge or we can call it as an infinite line with some charge okay or infinitely long charged wire anyways whatever so this is what is the equation for that and i hope you understood the derivation it is a very easy derivation and you can just apply look at the algorithm you have to put it in the algorithm all the time what is that you find out all integral e dot da for all the surfaces and equate with Q naught, I mean total Q enclosed with divided by epsilon naught. That's it. That's it. All right. I hope you understood. If you have any got, if you get any doubts, please ask away. All right. Thank you.